Welcome to worship with Memorial United Methodist Church of Clovis, California. We are Clara Yang and Cathedral St. Pond, and it is our pleasure to serve as hosts today. Truly, we are blessed to be able to worship together across the miles and even across the time zones. Today, I invite you to have a candle ready to light in just a couple of minutes as we move deeper into worship. We remember that worship is not a performance. Worship is each of us opening our hearts before God, offering praise and seeking forgiveness, healing, and wisdom for our lives. Memorial is a bilingual congregation, so as we prepare for the service, we want you to know that you will be invited to sing or re read aloud portions of the service today. Pick whichever language you prefer, English or Hmong, and sing and read today, boldly before God. There will be times when the readings are responsive. You can choose to read both parts or read either the light or the dark colored fonts. Everyone reads the words in black. Let's join now in our responsive call to worship, Lead Today by Michael and Evelyn Yang. Jesus Christ is the Lord, our Savior. Jesus Christ died for our sin. Jesus Christ saves our life. Thanks be to God. Laura is going to lead us as we light our candles and pass the peace. Hello from our house. As we welcome the Christ candle to be lit now, let's recognize the hope and promise that Christ always brings into our time together. We can focus on his presence now and take that into our coming week. His love never ends. He walks with us always. Thank you, Jesus. Let's extend the hand of fellowship to one another. Peace be with you. Let us take time now to center our hearts for worship. As we listen to music provided by Jenny, then we will move into our opening song. I'm muted. I can't find where my. <laughs> Let's join our hearts in the prayer. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. First, we're going to sing the song. Sorry. I had um, to unmute. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, wait, I can't hold the button and unmute. Wait. Okay. Found it. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to. Um, can you guys hear me? Okay. It says I'm on. Okay. We're going to sing Blessed Be the Name of the Lord, and we're going to sing an acapella, but I'm going to teach you how to sign it because it's pretty basic. There's not a whole lot of words. Okay. Um, so I'm going to switch my view just a moment so I can see more of you. 
to see if you're getting it. Okay. All right. So blessed is you take your hands like little fists together with your thumbs. You start with that at your foreheads and you drop it down like a blessing coming. Okay. Oh, that's good. You guys are great. Blessed be the name. So the name is you take your two fingers like and you tap it together. Okay. So blessed be the name. So you, it's like you're dropping that blessing right on top of the name. Okay. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Okay, so Lord. So uh, Lord is where you're going to take the letter L. Um, if you are right-handed, use your right hand to make an L. If you're left-handed, use your left hand. You'll just have a southern accent. That's fine. So you start with your L at the opposite shoulder, and you draw it like the Miss America sash. Okay, that's the sign for Lord. And because we're talking about our heavenly Lord, we're going to take the, the other hand and gesture upward, right? So, Lord, right? All right, so let's do that again. That's that's the whole first part of it. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We do that two times. And then, and then the last part is Alleluia, Alleluia, blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay, so Alleluia is, um, you're going to take, your pointer finger of your dominant hand right below your lips at your chin, and you're gonna take it from there and clap. That's praise, celebration, woohoo, right? Two little hooks, your fingers like, right? Good, hooks, celebration, and then ah, like you raise the roof, woo, ah, okay? And that's the word, for, that's the sign for alleluia, praise, celebration, and ah, okay? So praise, celebration, and ah, okay? Alleluia, Alleluia. Then, blessed be the name of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Wonderful. Okay, so we're gonna try to sing it together. Um, it's not a very hard tune. I think you'll get it. We're going to sing it all the way through two times. All right. So here we go. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, blessed be the name of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, blessed be the name of the Lord. How'd you guys do? You feel like you got it? One more time, one more time. Okay, here we go. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All right, good job. You guys are muted. Let us join our hearts in the prayer, our unison prayer, and the prayers of the people, and in the Lord's Prayer. Um,
tuấn em vừa bà có tự chữ chữ kỳ ha có lưu có mấy ha à cô vừa sao trong thư có tê chữ kỳ chuyển chuyển cử có tạo hóa thân lưu bố vừa bà chữ có tự chữ kỳ cử chuyển cho á phụ có lưu tê chữ ha ha cho số cái bao chữ có tự rư ở các từ dư lưu dư nhà của chùa từ bao từ các tên nữ chính chính hóa các từ chữ kỳ từ tiếng cha á phụ các lưu tiếng cha các lưu tiếng cha do nhóm một ý chí hóa các do ô các do ô văn chữ cao một ý chí chỉ cần là từ chữ yên ô lần trải lấy nữ tự nữ tê lưu cho chê há nữ nên lưu xua nhà cử nữ chỉ chê lời cử yó nà nữ khóa tư chữ ý bò chạy nhà cử nữ chỉ chê kia lê khóa nữ lưu bê cử khẩn cơ hữu mong ý chì em em Let's join together then in the prayers of the people. Loving God, we lift up to you so many concerns that are on our hearts and especially, especially we continue to lift up our world and our world leaders as they try to combat this global pandemic with the coronavirus. We lift up to you our concerns for the, for the mutated strains. We lift up to you our concerns for the vaccines that are not being distributed efficiently. We lift up to you our concerns for our friends who are ill with this disease. We lift up especially Shua and Jua and Jennifer. We lift up to you our dear friend, um, Juliet, who died this week from it and all her family and so many of us who are grieving her passing. God, we are, we are hurting, we are hurting. And um, we are grateful that we have many friends who have um, recovered. We're so thankful for the doctors and the nurses who have been giving such tender care for so long, um, just wearing themselves out, working to save the lives of other people. God, we are grateful for their dedication and their sacrifice. We lift up to you with thanksgiving the researchers who have been developing the vaccines and, and all who are helping to manufacture and distribute that. We lift up to you our world that is um, needing to receive this vaccine and we're we're asking that you would help the distribution to happen well all around the world, not just to rich countries, but to all the people of the world so that all people might be able to um, have this measure of, of extra protection to um, help slow this, the spread of the virus and, and eventually to eradicate it. God, this is our prayer and our plea, and we ask that you would help us as we work towards that goal. Um, God, we lift up to you with thanksgiving, um, the way that you have been in our lives um, this week. Um, we are so grateful that the transition of power in this nation happened without major violence happening. We, we just wanna acknowledge, acknowledge that God, how grateful we are for that. Um, and God, we acknowledge too that we still have fears that it still could erupt and that our elected officials are still in, in grave danger and that our communities could erupt in violence um, over over lies and misinformation and um, over the desire for white supremacists to um, wrest control of the nation away from um, from all the people and, and to hoard that just for white people. God, this is, um, a, we confess that this is a brokenness, this is a sin, and we don't want to be a part of that in any way. So give us clarity of mind that we might find ways to um, walk in your way and to uh, not get drawn in or in any way support the work of people who are trying to be oppressive to others and who are trying to uh, overturn our government that's of the people, by the people and for the people. God, we want to um, be instruments of your peace in our world. So give us your wisdom on how to stand up to evil and justice and oppression as our baptismal vows remind us, but help us to do it in a Christ-like way so that the power of your love would carry the day. 
remembering that there is nothing in this world, not even death, is stronger than the power of your love. So help us to be filled with that power so that we might boldly speak your truth into our world and by your grace be instruments of your transformation. God, we lift up to you many people we know who are struggling, um, people who have broken relationships in their families, people who are um, who've lost their income and are verging on homelessness, people who businesses have closed. Uh, we lift up to you all who are um, beginning to rebuild their homes as the um, work begins up in the foothills to clear away the, the burned um, rubble of the uh, that was left behind the fires and to um, rebuild. Help us to be ever mindful and useful to those who are suffering and struggling um, to be, bring a word of hope and a word of grace. Um, God, we are grateful that Jesus came and we remember that when Jesus came, it wasn't perfect in ideal conditions, that people were suffering and people were hurting and that he came to bring your love and he brought healing and wholeness wherever he went. God, we ask that you would bind us into the body of Christ for our world today, that we too might bring your love, your hope, your healing into our world. And we lift all of this to you in the name of Jesus. And as he taught us to pray, so now we pray as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is time now for our scripture readings. Joyce will be reading the first scripture and Addie will be reading the second scripture. The word of the Lord, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time saying, get up, go to, go to Nineveh, that great city and proclaim it to, the, to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. Hello, Hao Tashin 
Hello, kids of all ages. I don't know about you, but one thing Darren and I talk about a lot here at home during the pandemic lockdown is wanting to be able to travel again. We have daughters that live in other cities in California and we want to go visit them. And there's some countries that we've never been to before that we talk about visiting. So hopefully someday when it's safe again, we can pack our bags and go. And I have my suitcase right here. Now, if we're gonna go visit my daughter that lives in San Diego, the weather there is really nice. And so I'll just need some t-shirts and it doesn't get very cold there, so I don't need my heavy winter coat, but I'll take a sweater because it's cool at night. And she lives near the beach and we always like to go there. So I've got my swim towel and I've got my sun hat that has to go. And it's a long ways to San Diego, so we get to stay overnight. So I have my handy dandy carry all. That's got everything I'm gonna need for overnight. My hairspray and comb. I've got more sunscreen and some extra face masks. I got my toothbrush, shampoo, some soap. I got my slippers down here. And of course, I'm gonna have to take my pajamas. I think I've got everything. Darren, zip that up and put it in the car so we're ready as soon as we can go. Well, today's Bible story comes from the book of Mark. And it talks about people who left everything behind when they left to follow Jesus. They left it behind. After Jesus was baptized and was getting ready to start his ministry, he needed some helpers to come and travel with him while he preached. Now, he wasn't looking for people who were perfect. They didn't have to have the whole Old Testament memorized. They didn't have to be free from sin or pray all the time. They didn't do anything to deserve to be one of his disciples except that they were willing to leave everything behind. The first two disciples were brothers, Simon and Andrew, and Jesus found them down at the lake, tending to their nets, pulling fish in into their boat. He saw them and he called out from the lake shore, come and follow me. I will send you out to fish for people. And they did. They dropped everything and left it behind and follow Jesus. A little farther around the lake, Jesus saw two more brothers, James and John, with their, with their father Zebedee, and they were tending to their nets. He called to them to come follow, and they left everything behind. They said goodbye to their dad and the other workers in the boat, and they followed Jesus. They even left their dad behind. What would that have felt like to leave everything behind? The people that you love, the work that you did, everything about your normal life behind. We are blessed that we don't have to leave everything behind to follow Jesus. But maybe God is asking us to drop something. If there's anything you know in your life that's getting in the way, that might be distracting you from following Jesus, that's what God wants you to leave behind. Maybe it's too much screen time. Maybe you're bugging your sister when you really know you shouldn't. 
And maybe it's saying something ugly about somebody else. You know, this week we can all try to do something to take away that barrier that keeps us from following Jesus. It may be spending more time in prayer, maybe doing something kind for your neighbor. We can all be more patient with the people that are in lockdown with us in our own house. It might not seem like it's a very big or important thing to do, but to God, it's everything. God bless you this week. Okay, thank you, Teacher Laura. And so now, um, yeah, mm, let's breathe in the peace of Christ and breathe out the joy of the Lord. As we prepare our hearts to reflect on those scriptures, breathe in the peace of Christ and breathe out the joy of the Lord. So um, we have, have in our scripture reading two stories that are very similar and yet very, very, very different. Um, and so I want to take a little bit of time to um, compare the stories and then look at it for our own lives. So um, the first story kind of picks up literally in the middle. We're in verse uh, chapter three. Um, the book of Jonah is only four chapters long. And so we missed the first two um, chapters. Um, I'm still looking. I see all the kids in front of me. So kids, do you know what? Jonah, what is most famous in the story of Jonah? Do you know what's the most famous part? If you do, raise, wave your hand at me if you know the most famous part in the story of Jonah. Darren's giving you hints right there. You guys remember? Okay, so, okay, so I'm going to start at the beginning because, you know, probably they're not the only ones who aren't remembering the whole story, but I'll tell it quickly. So, um, God spoke to Jonah. Jonah was considered a prophet and, and God spoke to Jonah and said, I have a special job for you. I want you to go to the city of Nineveh and to tell everybody to repent because they're, they're doing horrible things. They're, they're, they're doing everything that's against my will. And I want you to go and tell them to repent so that they can repent because if they don't repent, I'm going to have to do something bad. I'll just have to like destroy the city because it's just so horrible. And I don't want to do that. I want, I want to, I want you to tell them to repent so that they can be saved. Okay, so that was Jonah's message. And here in chapter three, we see that he has, he is doing that. He's going into the city to tell them. But what's missing is the rest of chapter one and all of chapter two because Jonah didn't like Nineveh. Nineveh was the capital of the country, the the, the kingdom that had oppressed his people. They had overrun his nation. They had crushed the people there. They had occupied it. They had hauled people off into exile. Everything was disrupted because of the people of Nineveh. And Jonah didn't like the people of Nineveh. And he heard God say, if they don't repent, I'm going to have to destroy them. And what did Jonah say? <laughs> yes. Yes. They'll get what's coming to them. And so Jonah, instead of going to Nineveh, he got on a ship and went as far as he could the other direction. Literally, he was headed for Spain. Instead of Nineveh was like over in where, um, like Iran in that area now, he's heading for Spain. He's heading west instead of going east. He's trying to get as far away as he can. And um, so he's on a, on a boat and, um, and he's really tired because he was like trying to be sneaky and get out of town fast before God caught him. And he gets on the boat and he kind of goes below decks hoping God won't see him. And he decides to take a nap. So he's sleeping down below decks. And a big storm comes up and the waves are splashing over the deck and the boat is rocking badly back and forth and the waves are splashing in and, and the sailors are like, oh, my gosh, we're going to we're going to drown. We need to we can't get the water out fast enough. We need to throw off our cargo to try to lighten the boat so it won't sink. And so they're throwing that out and they're trying to bail the boat and the water's coming in faster. And, and they're just like somebody's God must be very angry with them. 
And um, so they're checking everybody, you know, is it your God who's angry? Is it your God? And, and everybody's like, no, I didn't do anything. I don't know. And so they're like, wait, there's somebody sleeping downstairs. So they go below decks. They find Jonah. They wake him up. Is your God angry with you? He's like, oh, yeah, it's me. Okay, so uh, you need to just throw me in the water. When you throw me in the water, it'll all calm down. And so it throws him in the water. And then in, in the book of Jonah, there's this beautiful prayer that Jonah prays because he's, he's sinking. He's sinking and he's going to drown. And he's kind of okay with that on the one side because then he doesn't have to tell the people of Nineveh. So maybe they'll still get wiped out. But you know what? All of us, we have this self-preservation thing. So he really wants to live. And suddenly a giant fish comes and swallows him up. And so he prays this prayer from, from the belly of the fish. A prayer, can you imagine being in the belly of a fish? It would smell so bad. It would smell so bad, right? And he prays his prayer of thanksgiving. You know, I ran from you. I tried to hide from you. I did everything that was wrong. And then when I called out for help, you came for me. Right? He prays his beautiful prayer. And so then um, the reports that the, the, the fish swims and vomits him up onto the, literally vomits him up onto the land again. And so then he heads over to Nineveh. So he goes into Nineveh. It's a huge city. He's walking through there. And you can imagine how he's telling the good news. Right? He's probably just kind of going, okay, you guys need to repent. Not like, repent, because he still is not that excited about Nineveh. He's still kind of hoping that God's going to wipe him out. And so he goes in and he's saying, you know, God doesn't like this. You need to repent, which means, remember, we talked about this before, to turn and go in a new direction. So he's saying, repent. You guys need to repent or God's going to wipe you out. And they heard that and they went, what? What? What did you say? It was like, repent or God's going to wipe you out. And they're like, wait, King, listen to this. What did you say, Jonah? Repent or God's going to wipe you out. Wow. Everybody, now stop what you're doing. Sit down in sackcloth and ashes and repent. Maybe God will spare us. And so they did. They repented. They sat down in sackcloth and ashes and they thought about their lives and they thought about what they'd been doing and they repented. They chose to go in a new direction. And then, um, so that's the part of the story we're getting, right? That chapter three where, where Jonah goes in and tells everybody to repent. But it didn't start out that way. And then chapter four talks about how Jonah's then he's really upset with God. And he goes out to pout about it. He's really upset because he said, God, I, know, I knew that you would do that. I knew that you would save him, <laughs> right? So I want you to just hold on to Jonah because you know what? I think a lot of us, a lot of us, all of us, not, I'm not just talking to kids, right? A lot of us are, are more like Jonah than we are like Peter, James, John, Andrew. Because then we get to the gospels and here comes Jesus walking by. Now it's not chapter one, right? He's, he's been doing a little bit of stuff. People are starting to hear about Jesus. Um, and so he comes through and, he's, and he sees them and he says, you know, come with me. And they left everything and followed him. Come with me. They left everything and followed him. Right? And they followed him for a few years. And then we remember the story when he was going to be crucified, how they fell away. And then after he had been raised, if you read the book of Acts, you'll see how they followed him still. That they faced all kinds of trials, all kinds of beatings, all kinds of torture. And they stayed true to the gospel. They kept proclaiming the love of God, not only with their words, but how they lived their lives. They lived the peace of God. They lived the love of God so that they would always make a good witness for Jesus, right? So that they would never disgrace his name with what they were saying or what they were doing. Most of us, I think, I think we kind of relate to Jonah a lot more. We kind of are comfortable hanging on to our resentments aren't we? I know that I often am. That's a big job that I have every day in my prayer life to try to find those places where I've been tucking those resentments down deep into my pockets. Because the thing is, is that I might be able to pretend like I don't have them for a day or two, but something's going to happen that's going to trigger it. And then all the, all the toxins of holding those resentments, all that's going to spill out. I'm going to say something hurtful, something rude or obnoxious. I'm going to behave in some way that is definitely not a Christ-like manner. More like what Jonah did, 
being resentful and pouty rather than being faithful disciples like Peter, James, John, and Andrew. And that's people, that's the whole thing. So what I want us to think about is to really learn that gospel message, to really learn that gospel message so that we can hold on to that, that we know that gospel message so thoroughly that we not only can say it, but we can live it. There's a, there's a saying that many of you have probably heard um, people will say, um, I, I always tell the truth because it's too hard to keep track of the lies. Right? If you tell a lie here, then you have to remember who you told it to so that you can keep track of it. Oh, it gets confusing. Layers of lies, just, it gets confusing. So it's just easier just to tell the truth, then you don't have to be confused, right? And then Martin Luther King Jr. used to say, um, that I will, I will choose love because hate is too great a burden. I will choose love because hate is too great a burden. And so here's the thing, Jonah actually chose hate. He chose hate, he tried to run away and let all those people be destroyed. That was, that was his, he thought that was a really good plan. And even after he'd been saved and vomited up by the big fish and walking with fish guts all the way to Nineveh to tell him, he was still resentful. He still had hoped that they would die. I just want you to think about in a giant city, say there's a city of 10,000, 20,000 people. Let's say 20,000 people. In that giant city of 20,000 people, how many people are actually making the political decisions? Maybe like 100. Well, maybe, let's be generous. Let's say maybe there's a thousand making political decisions about who gets to have what kind of jobs and what kind of pay there is and, and who has access to talk with the, the rulers and, you know, those kind of things. What, what the laws are going to be. Maybe a thousand people. So that would be 19,000 people who don't make the laws, right? 19,000 just average people live in their lives waking up in the morning, sometimes grouchy, sometimes happy, making each other laugh, telling jokes, teasing. And they, they haven't been shown the love of God, so they, they're not acting and walking in the way of God. So because of that, their lives are kind of a mess. And when our lives are a mess, they make other people's lives a mess too. And that's what Jonah's holding on to. You made my life a mess. And you're going to pay for it. But that's not what God wants. That's not what God wants at all. God wants us to proclaim the good news so that people can learn how to get their lives together following Jesus. That we would be able to proclaim God's love and help people see that working together is always better. Because if Jonah had had his way, he would have had to borne the guilt of 20,000 deaths, all those people, little bitty kids giggling in the streets and then dying. What a burden that would be. That's why Martin Luther King said, I choose love because hate is too great a burden. Hate brings suffering, it always brings suffering. It doesn't ever relieve suffering. It doesn't ever build up or restore hope or lives. Hate only brings suffering and destruction. And so he said to us, I choose love because hate is too great a burden. So I want to say to you that another way to put that is to cling to the gospel. Cling to that. Don't, don't let anything pry you away from the story of Jesus and the priority that he set before us. That priority is to go into all the world and to tell the good news. And he said, they all know that you are my disciples by your love. They will know that you are my disciples by your love. And so we want to practice being loving. And we want to practice sitting with the people of Nineveh in repentance for all those times that we nurtured and harbored our resentments. Instead of inviting God to remove them and to heal us so that we could be filled with love. Because while we're harboring resentments, we cannot we cannot 
truly be the instruments of love. We're letting the toxins build in there. And we're going to end up, it's going to end up spilling on somebody. It's going to cause some pain or suffering on somebody. And sometimes it's going to cause pain or suffering on entire nations. And so we want to, people, we want to be instruments of God's peace. We want to be the body of Christ. We want to follow Jesus and become that, that love of God embodied for our world today. And so rather than following Jonah's example of reluctant servanthood, we want to follow the example of the disciples, but we also want to follow the example of the people of Nineveh, who when they heard the good news took time to sit down and look at their lives and figure out where they had walked away from what God really wants for them. And they repented and went in a new direction. So I want to encourage you then, cling to the gospel, people. Find the, the, the gospel message, live the gospel message. And if there's anything impeding that, sit down in sackcloth and ashes, sit down and repent and allow God to remove that from your life and to show you a better way, teach you a better way so that we can tell the truth, so that we can always be love, and so that every day what we're saying and what we're doing makes a good witness for Jesus. So I'm going to invite you now to join me in prayer. If you have a candle, I invite you to put the candle where you can see it. I don't have anything to set my candle on today, so I can't do that. But um, let's join together in prayer. Loving God, you who are the fountain of forgiveness, the tale of Jonah reminds us that you're never ending love, your never failing love, your unconditional love is for all people and all creation. Though you stand ready to forgive our sin, we confess that too often we find it easier to cling to our resentments, our brokenness, our bitterness. We clench our fists and grind our teeth and close ourselves off from one another rather than opening our hearts before you to invite in your healing and your forgiveness. God, we ask that you would help us to be like the people of Nineveh who sat down to repent, to change their lives, to follow your teachings to be your faithful disciples. Help us, God, to be like Peter, James, John, and Andrew, that we might follow where you lead us, that we might learn to let go of all that holds us back, whether it's our attitudes, our perceptions, our possessions, our preconceived ideas of what your love should look like in our world. God, help us to cling to your gospel. The good news that we are all loved by you, that Jesus has shown us that love and has shown us that there is nothing, not even death, that is stronger than that love. God, help us to receive that good news to the very core of our being so that we might live that good news daily. And that through our lives, others would see the glory of your love and would draw near to you. That their lives might be touched and blessed by your forgiveness and your healing love. And that together we might be able to shine your life and light into our world. Until the day when all people know the power of your love and draw together as one family within that love. We lift all of this up to you in the name of Jesus and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. And so now we're gonna have Darren, huh? He's gonna sing a special song for us.
You're still muted, Darren. It's called Two Fishermen. It's in the faith we sing. Stood by the shore and cast their nets upon an ageless sea. Now Jesus watched them from afar and called them each by name. It changed their lives, these simple men. They'd never be the same. Leave all things behind and come and follow me. Come and follow me. And so he walked along the shore, and James and John he find, and their two sons of Zebedee would leave their nets behind. They work and all they held so dear, they left beside their nets. And the names we heard to Jesus called, they came without regret. Leave all things you have and come and follow me. Come and follow me. Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, beloved one. You heard Christ call to speak good news revealed in God's own Son. Santa Mary Magdalene traveled with our Lord. You maintain, minister to him in the joy, and he is God adored. Leave all things behind and come and follow me. Leave all things behind and come and follow me. And you, good Christians, one and all, and who follow Jesus' way, come leave behind what keeps you bound to the trappings of your day. And listen to when he calls your name to come and follow near. For still he speaks to varied ways to those whose call will hear. Leave all things you have and come and follow me. Come and follow me. As an extension of our gratitude for all that God has done for us, we commit to using our time, talent, and treasure for God's holy purposes. We are each encouraged to find ways to spend time volunteering, using our time and talent to help others, bringing love and beauty into our world. We are also to dedicate a portion of our financial treasure to help extend the ministries of the congregation to those in greatest suffering. You may make a donation to this congregation by using the tabs on our website, by mailing a check, or even by signing up for monthly payments through PayPal or your banking bill pay. If you are a member of a congregation elsewhere, please send your contribution to your local church to, to support ministry in your community. We are coming near the end of our worship time. As a way to honor God, I invite you to stand for the doxology which is a song of praise and remain standing through the prayer of dedication, unison, benediction, and closing hymn. As you are able or willing, please stand and join in singing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host, Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. 
Please join in saying the prayer of dedication. We thank you, Lord, for this step forward. Bless the gift of our lives, which is that we return. By your grace, our offering the life of the issue. Amen. ขอเกียรติตัวอัลโตรทอลโกเตอร์ตัวเล็กเกอร์ไอ้ทอฮะเจลินฮิบุคิเกอร์ Amen. Oops. Awesome. Just tell me it's the wrong song. Okay, then. One moment, please. Decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Who will be behind me, the cross before me? The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Okay. 